What's up guys? We are back for what is really a pretty special review. Uh, one that I've mentioned previously that I probably shouldn't even need to do at this point because uh, these guys appeared on my top 10 list for 2017, but I just never got a chance to actually review them because of time constraints. So we are going to take a look at the first figures I've ever bought from this company and their first licensed property, as far as I, I am aware, uh, Boss Fight Studios, Bucky O'Hare, and First Mate Jenny figures. Uh, so these are modern interpretations of the vintage figures. So they are uh, about four inches tall. They come on some very collector friendly cards. They are uh, resealable so you can pull the card out and then slide it back in if you were so inclined. Almost makes me not want to really open them though because the cards and everything about them just look amazing. They look very vintage but at the same time very much modern. Uh, I really dig the artwork on here. This classic Bucky O'Hare uh, comic style artwork. And then on the back it shows uh, that exact type of artwork along with our two figures from Wave 1. So that's Bucky and Jenny along with the uh, figures that are coming down the line. There's already pre-orders up for Wave 2 and you know I've already got those pre-ordered. Uh, so yeah, let's get to it. Let's pull these guys out and take a look. All right, guys, so here they are out of the packaging. And I mean, just look at them. They are absolutely beautiful figures. Probably just end this review right now and say, just go buy them if you haven't already. But we are gonna talk about them. And I'm gonna start with the captain himself. So we're gonna move Jenny out of the way for just a few minutes. She will have her time to shine shortly. But let's take a look at this guy. We'll take a look at you know the, all the normal stuff and then we'll talk accessories. This is how he comes out of the packaging, just the standard setup that he comes with. And I think uh, as far as the looks go, they could not have nailed this figure any better if they really wanted to. Uh, I, don't, I don't know um, how many folks out there that are watching this video really appreciate Bucky O'Hare. Uh, it is a pretty esoteric thing. It wasn't the most popular line. It wasn't the most popular cartoon in the 90s. Um, but yeah, it's pretty amazing. And the comic book is probably even more obscure than that to most people because it came out before those. So uh, let's take a look at him real quick. We'll do articulation. There's one thing about this figure that I actually have a problem with. It's pretty minor, and I'm sure I can fix it anyway no matter what. But I'm going to talk about it because, you know, that's what this is. So I'm going to start there. So... The, one of the accessories, I guess, is maybe not an accessory, it's just a piece that couldn't be put on him in the packaging, is this cape. And it just pegs into the back, but it's a very rubbery cape. And the peg, as such, is very rubbery. So I have a really hard time uh, not only getting this in, but when you move it around too much, it wants to fall out. So, you know, that that is a problem on its own. It's in there pretty good right now. It's probably going to fall out now that I'm saying that. But uh, that's just that's one little pain point. If I had to, had to pinpoint one thing that really bugs me it was the amount of force i had to put amount of force i had to use to get this into the back of this figure and for the purposes of this review i am going to take it out which kind of worries me i got to put it back in um but you can see yeah it's already kind of stressed a little bit the plastic is a little bit discolored on that peg uh, i like the cape i mean it, it is he needs it it's part of the character but it is a you know a little bit of a pain point for me to have to fiddle with that so much to put it in beyond that though i think the figure is almost as perfect as can be. Um, real quick, just for a size comparison, just so you have an idea of what what this is and what this looks like here, I'm just gonna bring in kind of a generic figure. So here's a, here's a Black Series, a six inch. You can see, you know, he's kind of two heads taller than Bucky there. So Bucky's about a four inch, four-ish inch figure. And it works well on this scale. I don't have too much of a problem with the scale usage here. It is kind of an odd thing. I was when I first heard that these were coming out, I kind of expected a full six inch line, but at the same time, now that I have these in hand, I really don't care. It makes no difference to me. So uh, just for comparison's sake, that's how big they are. So let's take a look at articulation real quick. There's quite a bit on this guy, uh, surpri surprisingly for being so small. Ears can rotate. They can move side to side. There is, they're in like a ball joint. Uh, the head and neck is a double ball peg, so it can go all the way around and all over. This, uh, this piece here free floats over top of the shoulders and sits around the ball, uh, the neck, joint and that's the the peg the barbell uh aspect of it so you can kind of see the other joint down there and then this sits around it uh so he kind of he can kind of move pretty freely arms can go all the way out all the way around these are going to get in the way to a degree but it's never it's not been a problem for me arms can uh at the elbow can can move we've got a single joint 
and it's pretty tight too, thankfully. Uh, there is no actual wrist articulation because of how they did the swappable hands on here. The actual, the forearm, basically the glove, is the swapping point. So there is rotation at the forearm, which is pretty much okay for me. I haven't found, again, an issuer with that. It doesn't bother me. Um, the tail is articulated, so you can move it around, which that's a great touch. Uh, there is two points of articulation at the, the waist crotch area, so the the torso can rotate independent of the lower half. So, you know, his his crotch and, and down can rotate and his torso on up can rotate. So there, it's an independent uh, movement there. Legs can go out. I imagine they could probably go all the way out if it weren't for his flared pants. Uh, we can go forward pretty good. There is a single joint at the knee. It's pretty tight still. And then we've got a rocker and a hinge at the ankle. And then he's got toe articulation because he's got those big floppy bunny feet. So yeah, he's he's pretty loaded for such a small figure. I don't really think there's any, any room to complain about his articulation. The only weird part is no wrist movement. But I understand why it's that way based on how he's designed. Overall, the rest of the figure I think is just almost perfect. The face looks like it jumped out of the comic book. The eyes in particular look like they are comic art style, and I think it's great. I think it's fantastic. The teeth are painted really well. Most of him is actually, there's a lot of molded plastic going on here. The, you know, the red is molded. We've got yellow paint on the chest, but the, the gloves are obviously molded. And then, uh, you know, the articulation I'm uh, at, the, uh, at the knee and the, the, the boot down, you know, there's a paint line there. But for the most part, this guy is, uh, he's not overly painted. He's not underpainted. He's just painted where he needs to be painted. We've got paints in the ears. So there's pink bunny ears in there. We've got the silver on the goggles. And, I mean, just all in all, I don't really think that uh, there's a whole lot of room to complain. Again, if I had to pick one thing, it's, it's making sure that this thing stays in. And, you know, I might just, I don't know, I don't want to glue it in there because then I'll never be able to move it. But I'm going to figure out a way to make sure that this stays securely in. And if and once I do that, he might as well be a perfect figure for me. Uh, I do love the vintage figures, but uh, if they never came out and this is the only Bucky O'Hare figure I ever had, I don't think I would be upset about that. All right, now for accessories for old Buck here, he uh, actually comes with quite a bit. You know, you're paying a premium for this small figure, you're bound to get a whole bunch of accessories, and I think that's kind of the thing for Boss Fight Studio. Their uh, figures generally come with a lot of stuff. So let's quick, uh, quickly run through what we've got. We've got two blaster pistols. These can, these can actually uh, fit on his belt on the little uh, pegs that stick out, if you are so inclined. They're just, uh, you know, silver, but they've got a lot of sculpted detail on them. They look really cool. Uh, they look very much like the Bucky O'Hare gun. We have got a set of close-fisted hands. We have got a pointing finger for his uh, left hand and for his right hand we've got an open style uh, hand as well. And then we have got two extra faces. So one is uh, very much like the one that he comes with out of the box except that his mouth is uh, open. And then there is another one that uh, he's a little bit angrier. They are incredibly similar. Um, it's almost impossible for me at, at times to tell them apart, but they are slightly and ever so different. So you've got a couple different options, and if you want to be real subtle about it, I suppose, um, I'm pretty much going to stick with the one that he comes with out of the box because it's kind of the standard Bucky O'Hare look, but I really dig the array of accessories that we get with these figures. So with that done, let's start looking at First Mate Jenny. All right, and here is the first mate, Jenny, and honestly, of the two, this is kind of the star of the show because she never made it in the vintage line. Her figure never got uh, produced. She never made it to retail. So if you've got a full set of vintage figures, you still don't have this character, and she is one of the most important characters in the series. So I think it was the right move by Boss Fight to actually make her part of Wave 1, and she's part of Wave 2 as well, I think, a variant, right? Uh, so yeah, let's take a look at her. She is considerably bigger than Bucky, at least in terms of overall plastic use. So you can see they're pretty much the same size. But look at all that attic plastic on the back. Um, so that obviously causes some stability issues, but at the same time, it actually fixes its own problem. Uh, so I haven't really played with her to the point where I'm getting her in tons and tons of dynamic poses, but in the poses that I want her to be in, I've not had any issues. So you can see she's got a very small footprint, but her tail actually rests on the ground. So it, it's basically a third leg. At least that's how I'm treating it for now. Um, so she can stand up just fine. I don't have any issues there. Even with this humongous head of hair, it does hinder articulation, but, you know, 
the design is the design, so they can only do what they can do. Uh, I'm not trying to make excuses for them because you know it is a it is a bad <laughs> it is bad for articulation, but at the same time, that's what she looks like, so I can't argue with it. Um, so the head can move side to side. It, it does have up and down, but you're only going to get so far until you start hitting the. Uh, hitting the, the figure itself. Arms can go out all around. They are going to hit the shoulder pads a bit. Uh, single jointed elbow and then the wrists are ball pegged in there so they can move around, swivel. She has a torso twist. So she can go all the way around if you were so inclined. The tail is hinged and it can rotate. So you got plenty of movement there. Legs can go all the way out. Uh, they can kick all the way forward and a decent bit back. And then you have got a single joint at the knee. There's also a rotation up in that thigh area. And then she has swiveling hinged ankles. So as far as your, your articulation goes, uh, she's pretty much the same as Bucky for the most part. It's just, you know, the head is a little bit of an issue, not too crazy. And that's pretty much it. Really, um, I just think she looks great. I don't have any real issues with this figure outside of the fact that her design on its own kind of precludes her being posed in any real dynamic ways, at least so far as what I've found. Uh, just because she has such a small footprint, her figure is very back heavy because of the, the hair and of the tail, but the tail on its own, you know, acts as a third leg again. Her design though, I think is pretty fantastic. I think they've nailed the sculpt. Again, just like with Bucky, I think they nailed pretty much everything with this figure. Um, you know, I'm not trying to, to lump undue praise onto them, but I think that these figures are essentially everything that I wanted them to be. And the fact that, you know, I do have such a fond memory of this property makes me love the fact that they executed these figures so well even more. So, uh, again, buy them. This is a great figure, so let's talk about her accessories now. Now, as far as Jenny goes, she came with the lion's share of accessories compared to uh, her captain. So we have got some hands, we have got some effect pieces, we've got faces. Uh, she really just has it all. So this is in addition to what she comes with out of the box. So we've got her uh, kind of telekinetic style uh, effect hands. So we've got a set for those. We've got closed fisted hands because in the box she comes with open style gripping hands. Um, and then we have got a set of uh, style pose hands. So they're both different. They have different effects. So this is just her kind of uh, using, just putting her fingers out. This one's her, you know, almost kind of doing like the metal horns. Uh, and then we have got some effect pieces. These can uh, strap onto her wrists and then one for each hand. And then we have got different faces. So out of the box, uh, Jenny comes with a kind of static head where she is, uh, she's got an open mouth and you can see her teeth as well. This one we've got, um, She's kind of angry with this head, so her eyes are uh, a little narrower, her brow is kind of furrowed. We've got a winking face, and then this one is similar to what she comes with out of the box, except you don't see her teeth, her mouth isn't open as much. So that's what I was saying with the Bucky figure, is that some of the changes that they've made for these different faces are incredibly subtle. And while I'm not sure it's entirely necessary, I really dig the fact that they have given us just so many options, especially with this figure. All right, so overall, I think it's pretty obvious that I'm absolutely in love with these figures. The fact that they were on my top 10 list last year without even being given a review uh, kind of tells you that I really, really like them. I just didn't have time to crank out the review and it, things just backed up and backed up. But I knew as soon as I got my hands on them that they belonged on the list. Uh, I think Jenny is probably my favorite in terms of what all she comes with just because there's so many options. But you cannot discount the fact that Bucky O'Hare is an amazing figure. I have long been a fan of the Bucky comic, of the cartoon, of the vintage toys. So, you know, to finally get this figure and Jenny finally getting a figure since she never came out in the vintage line, uh, it's just an exceptional line. I think Boss Fight Studio did a really, really fantastic job and I could not be more eagerly anticipating Wave 2 than I was before. So they've, they've really done it for me. They've set a very high expectation for this line and I am confident that they will continue to deliver. So that is going to do it for this look at the Boss Fight Studio Bucky O'Hare and First Mate Jenny figures. Uh, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time, guys.